Hello, my name is John Brisson, author of Fix Your Gut and Health Coach. Welcome to the Fix Your Gut YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the use of magnetic resonance imaging, which is an MRI procedure, as well as the use of gad gadolinium-based contrasts in MRI procedures and if they are safe. Um, now, magnetic resonance imaging is believed to be a safer type of um, medical imaging co uh, compared to uh, some of the other types that are used including um, x-rays which are used in x-ray procedures or um, ionizing radiation which is used in uh, compute, computed to tomography scans which are CT scans or positron emission tomography uh, scans which are PET scans which expose the body to ionizing radiation. Um, so there are some positives and negatives of using MRIs um, compared to those other forms of imaging. Um, now, a MRI exposes the body to non-native magnetic fields, which for some people who are sensitive to non-native uh, magnetic fields, um, they should, you know, they wouldn't be able to tolerate it. Um, compared to people who are sensitive to ionizing radiation, like in CT scans, which ionizing radiation, as we know, is able to cause uh, cancer and other abnormalities uh, when the body is exposed. Um, so the MRIs in and of themselves um, are safer in that regard that they don't expose the body to ionizing radiation, but they do expose the body to um, mag you know, non-native magnetic fields, which some people may be sensitive to. Um, and some people are sensitive to um, more of the um, ionizing radiation, and some people are more sensitive to uh, non-native magnetic fields. Um, so, you know, when it happens, when a, body, a person gets an MRI scan, they're kind of put, now not all MRI scans are this way, but your standard MRI scan are kind of put on a platform, like a little, kind of like a bed where you lay down and it kind of moves into the MRI machine. So some people who are claustrophobic, you know, you're kind of put into like a tunnel. Um, and it, it can cause people to um, feel like that they are insecure or that they're trapped. Um, even though there are newer open MRI machines um, that some people who are claustrophobic feel like they are um, safer in. So when an MRI procedure happens, um, the magnetic field is, is, is begin, um, starts to oscillate um, through the magnets, and um, the, your, the hydrogen atoms in, in your body, they, they get excited to the, um, to the magnetic field um, because mo uh, protons within most of our tissues, you know, there's water molecules. So the water molecules start vibrating um, and an image of the area being scanned of the body starts to be formed and sent back to a computer so that a radiologist is able to uh, look at the image. Of, of, the, of your body. Um, and then there's two different types of um, uh, like, kind of like spin states that are used. One is a T1, which is like a spin lattice. Another is T2, which is a spin spin. Um, and depending on what you need to be seen, for example, T1 weighted images are better at shedding fatty tissue, melanin, uh, gadolinium, uh, contrast areas and gray matter of the brain within this in the cerebral cortex as well as uh, possible like slow flowing uh, blood as well and uh, t2 weighted images are better at showing edema uh, which is swelling inflammation the white matter part within the brain um, and paramedic bacterial uh, including uh, iron and ferritin um, so you know depending on what's needed um, t1 or t2 may be performed during the mri procedure um, so there are some dangers associated with MRI outside of the non-native magnetic field. Um, they include um, people with um, ferromagnetic material within their body, uh, uterine implants, um, uh, pacemakers, uh, the other implants are, that may be ferromagnetic. Um, they, they, they can, you know, if you go into MRI and they're not approved for uh, an MRI, um, or even if they are improved, it's still a small risk depending on how ferromagnetic the material is. Um, because of the magnetic field, they can either become very hot and cause burns, which you do not want, or they could possibly, in some cases, be ejected out of the body, which can cause a lot of damage and inflammation if it pulls something out, depending on where it is. You know, if you have a, a uterine device, uh, it, it pulls it out, that could cause major damage uh, to the uterus. 
Um, and if you have a pacemaker and it pulls the leads out of your heart, that could cause major, major cardiac damage. And some people have died uh, from those things occurring. As well as a lot of people don't realize is some tattoos contain ferromagnetic material and they have been known uh, through case reports to heat up on occasion for people who have MRI procedures done and cause a lot of burning, a lot of scarring. Um, so that can happen. Uh, as well as um, uh, a lot of people, you have to be careful uh, when the, in the room itself. You have to make sure that the, the person doing the MRI procedure really checks the room for any type of ferromagnetic material oxygen tanks for example um, because there have been instances where ferromagnetic material magnetic material that was in the room was pulled into the magnetic field of the MRI uh, causing you know explosions if it's an oxygen tank or uh, causing projectile damage if it was uh, something that like that contains ferromagnetic material like a metal chair uh, which could cause damage death or illness to people who are getting the MRI procedure uh, so you definitely want to make sure that you spot check the room very well that there is no ferromagnetic material that is left in an MRI when you have it done. Um, one final thing is is uh, most MRI machines are 1.5 Tesla. Uh, some of the uh, newer ones are 3 Tesla. Um, 3 Tesla seems to be better as far as getting an imaging, uh, like an image. Uh, so therefore they may be, um, uh, may be a safer a safer. Uh, Thing to have instead of having gadolinium based contrast done um but you know they, it is a stronger field so people who are more sensitive to non-native magnetic fields would be more sensitive to a three tesla scan uh, for one and second you know implants that are approved as safe for 1.5 tesla scans may not be approved for three tesla scans because that is a stronger magnetic field so be aware of that too as well um, so what is gadolinium? Uh, gadolinium was discovered in 1880 by uh, John uh, uh, Gilsard de Marnique of Switzerland. Um, it's a chemical element with the atomic number of 64 in the periodic table. Uh, gadolinium uh, is named after Johann Gadolin, a, a Finnish chemist and geologist in 1792. He isolated the first known rare earth uh, compound known as deuterium oxide. Um, and, you know, a few years later, this ore contains sev several uh, lanthanides, which uh, gadolin gadolin gadolinite is one and gadolinium is in it. Um, so gadolinium is silver white. It's malleable. It's paramagnetic at temperatures above uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And it has radio there are radio radioactive isotopes of gadolinium, and it is a rare earth metal. Um, Gadolinium is rarely found on its own in nature. Most of the time, it's a, it's a constituent of other uh, minerals, including monzonite and uh, bastinite, and it's usually mined in the United States, Russia, China, Australia, and India. Uh, gadolinium is used in alloys to produce magnet because of the ferro ferromagnetic component of it, electric components, and data storage disks outside of its use as an MRI-based contrast. Um, so it does have uses. Um, gadolinium in and of itself, free ions of gadolinium um, are, have no human biological role whatsoever, as well as free ions of gadolinium are incredibly toxic to the human body. Um, so gadolinium-based contrast agents are widely agents are widely used for MRI procedures throughout the world. Uh, 30 million doses of uh, gadolinium-based contrast agents are consumed worldwide, and more than 300 million doses have been administered since their introduction. Uh, many, many radiologists claim that gadolinium is base contrasts are safe as long as you have normal kidney function because your kidneys are the primer, primary way that the body excretes gadolinium. And at most, people will get a rash uh, from its use at the intravenous site. Um, since the gadolinium-based contrasts, the gadolinium are bond, bonded to different uh, ligands. Um, they're safe because they're not, well, at least according to the radiologist, because they're not bo not in their free ionic state. Um, they're bonded, therefore, you know, they're eliminated easier by the body, and they're not in their free ionic state, so they can't cause damage. Problem with that is, is the research and studies that we have show is when gadolinium comes in contact with zinc or iron, um, it's a, a process called transmetallation occurs. Uh, where the um, gadolinium ions are free from the ligand. And when that happens, it can release toxic free gadolinium ions that can accumulate you know, throughout the body, the brain, the skin, the bones, the eyes, the livers, the kidneys, uh, causing uh, injury and inflammation. And there's many studies that show that this transmetallation can occur. Uh, there are nine United States Food and Drug Administration approved gadolinium-based contrast agents. 
Uh, they range from being either lin linear, macrocyclic, ionic, and non-ionic. Uh, linear chelates uh, tend to be weaker, so transmetallation is more likely to be occur. They have flexible open chains. Macrocyclic chelates are more rigid um, around the gadolinium, so they have less likely chance of causing transmetallation, but they still can. Um, so the problem with this is we know that free gadolinium ions, once the gadolinium has been transmetallated uh, from exposure to zinc and iron, which are both necessary minerals that are in the body, um, it causes massive amounts of oxidative stress within the mitochondria through calcium influx. It disrupts calcium homeostasis, triggers releases of multiple cytokines, many different interleukins, um, and, and uh, NF, uh, NF as well. Um, it, it, gadolinium also has a similar ionic radius compared to calcium ions, so it actually competes with calcium ions. It can uh, replace calcium in bones and cause issues with uh, calcium homeostasis. Uh, and it's also uh, blocks many calcium ion dependent enzymes uh, like S-transferases, dehydrogenases, kinases, ATPase, and glutathione, uh, directly causing further mitochondrial dysfunction. So as you see, free gadolinium ions are extremely toxic to the human body. Uh, Gadolinium-based contrast administration also induces a mobilization, mobilization of iron throughout the body. Uh, it increases iron concentration with CD163 plus macrophages that process and recycle iron, which uh, in, in, inhibits uh, proper iron homeostasis. And in doing so, it causes iron uh, to be more free uh, through labelle iron pooling and cause you know, further mitochondrial damage, even within the brain. Uh, Gadolinium exposure is the only known cause for a condition called uh, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. Uh, symptoms of nephrogenic system fibrosis usually occur within two to ten weeks of the use of gadolinium-based contrast agents, but may occur months or years after exposure. Uh, symptoms of the condition include thickening and hardening, fibrosis of the skin, subcutaneous tissues, and sometimes underlying skeletal muscle. If the skeleton tissue is affected, um, pain, loss of range of motion, contractures, or loss of function can occur. Swelling, pain, itching may occur. I mean, it's a very serious disease where fibrosis... Uh, attacks both the skin and systemically throughout the whole body. Um, and gadolinium is the only known cause of um, the disease. Um, so um, the agents, the gadolinium-based contrast agents, Omniscan, Optimark, and Magnavis have been implicated as the primary contrast agents that trigger nephrogenic system fibrosis. Omniscan and Magnavis have been banned in use of the European Union um, as of 2017, but they're still used here in the United States. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration has, has released uh, numerous warnings um, in the 2000, uh, 2010s um, about uh, gadolinium uh, uh, causing issues that it's able to, to deposit in the brain, which was previously not thought to believe to be true, um, and that it can retain in organs even through these gadolinium-based contrasts. However, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, even though they admit all this, that it could cause issues, okay, that it, sh not that it causes issues, that it does accumulate, that transmetallation does occur, uh, that it does accumulate, they still steadfast that even though this happens, they do not know, even though there's multiple studies to show it, that the free accumulated ion gadolinium, we don't know if it causes any problems. I just mentioned everything that can cause mitochondrial stress, uh, calcium, a disruption of calcium and iron homeostasis, which is, can cause a lot of inflammation and, and major issues. So yeah, uh, U.S. Food and Drug Administration, I call BS. You're just protecting the manufacturing companies of the gadolinium-based contrast agents. Uh, you require uh, warnings to be put on the drug inserts. So come on, just be real here. You know the gadolinium causes issues. Don't just beat around the bush and just say that the, the, the benefit of gadolinium-based contract agents outweigh any of the potential risks. That, that's a BS. Um, gadolinium-based contract agents are not supposed to cross the blood-brain barrier easily. However, there are studies to show that it actually does and that many people with you know, issues with the integrity of their blood-brain barrier, you know, if they're suffering from gut dysbiosis because of endotoxins or diabetes or heavy metal toxicity like mercury or multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's disease or having a stroke, Brain cancer, any of those conditions, if you use gadolinium, your blood brain barrier is weakened, and well, it does cross, and if transmetallation occurs in the brain, which it can, you have gadolinium in your brain there, and that's going to cause massive amounts of oxidative stress and neural issues. So, yeah, that's definitely a problem. Um, so, there is uh, one agent called Omniscan, 
And in fixture, uh, the fixture cut blog that I wrote, I broke down the warnings that were actually in the OmniScan insert. Uh, definitely take a look at that. Uh, familiarize yourself with that. They pretty much say that it can cause gadolinium retention. Uh, it can cause damage. Um, but yet it's still used. And also one thing I do want to mention is gadolinium contrast agents should never be used during pregnancy. Um, even um, the Omniscan uh, insert mentions that gadolinium-based contrasts are able to cross the placenta, resulting in fetal exposure and gadolinium retention in children. Um, again, if you have a child and you have to have MRI done, if you're, if you're pregnant you're going to have an MRI done, it has to be done. Do three Tesla. I know a three Tesla scan. I know that it's increased magnetic, uh, non native magnetic field, but still, nonetheless, it's safer than getting gadolinium by for sure. So definitely look over the Omni scan that I have in the blog for the insert. Look through it and look at all the warnings that are published in there, okay? And ask your radiologist if they've ever read any of the inserts of the of of of, of the gadolinium based contract agents that they are giving you. I doubt they have because if they did, they would warn you. I mean, it's not supposed to be used uh, children under the age of two. Um, there's no long term animal studies to determine if Omniscan is carcinogenic. Um, if they tell you it's safe, the insert says there's a lot of warnings. And even the FDA admits that there's some issues with gadolinium retention, so challenge them on them. Um, also, in my blog, I have some information on what might be properly done to detox gadolinium. Some people talk about using uh, intravenous calcium to sodium EDTA, and there is some issues with that associated with its use. For example, if you have mercury amalgams in your mouth or mercury burdened, you cannot use that method because it'll improperly displace mercury. Some people recommend using the Andrew, Andrew Cutler protocol to detox from it, but again, there's no studies or anything about it actually working for gadolinium. Um, but yes, I have some information in my blog and I go more in depth of things that can be done if you were poisoned with gadolinium and my heart definitely goes out to you. Uh, one last thing is, is if you did have to use a gadolinium based contrast agent, and I do not recommend this. Prohansen Gadivist um, are, are supposedly the best at being macrocylic as far as them not causing transmetallation, but they still do. Um, manganese based contract agents are being looked into. I don't recommend those either as all because as we know, manganese in high amounts are neurotoxic. It's gonna cause the same problems. I, it just baffles my mind. Um, as well as there's current lawsuit going on right now. Gino Kelly, who's Chuck Norris's wife, and there's other people, are suing the pharmaceutical agents, the companies uh, that uh, that uh, produce the gadolinium-based contrast agents. It's marketing as them as being safe and not giving the risks um, when in fact they are. I also want to personally thank the Lighthouse Project as well as the MRI gadolinium toxicity illness Facebook groups for trying to spread awareness um, to the dangers of gadolinium-based contrast agents. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely, you know, before I have, you know, an MRI done, I would definitely um, heavily weigh the use of gadolinium. I do not recommend it personally. I would never have its use. I'd rather have a three Tesla MRI done um, instead of doing gadolinium, even though increased exposure to non-native uh, magnetic fields. Uh, I believe that gadolinium-based contrast agents are toxic because of transmetallation. It's been proved in multiple studies. And I do not recommend it. Um, to those who are affected um, by gadolinium toxicity or have loved ones who are affected, I hope that you can recover. I hope that you can find peace. Uh, many people have become very ill from their use, and sadly, some people have died. Um, that's all we have for today. Um, if you please uh, found this video informative, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I definitely hope you all have a great day, and uh, take care.